a mixture made in heaven. So a little measure of heritage apple balsamic, some really well chilled Prosecco. And why this works so well, by grape variety, Prosecco is a little sweeter than champagne. Mm -hmm. So the vinegar is going to add a little acidity. It's actually almost a cheat. You, you imagine you're getting a, a, a drier, more, more intense flavors than traditionally with some of the Proseccos. So that's an apple mimosa. What a great way to, to start your morning. Well, start our evening. I know I want one of those now. <laughs> they look absolutely delicious. What is balsamic vinegar before we go any further? That would be balsamic vinegar, is, it falls into two categories. The protection is, is on a black balsamic, but they're both made by the same method. And it's a method of vinification. So they're made very similar to a wine. They will then allow the wines to sour and they will then cook some of the, the must, the great must, depending on what they want, what the producers want, maybe 24, 36 hours slowly. And it's a thing, it's the most intense aroma ever. If you go to a balsamic house, they're usually very approachable because they want people to love it. So they, they, they're, they're happy to show people how they produce. And it is a wondrous thing to watch just slowly take it away on a cooker with a paddle, it'll lift it up and aerate it, and it'll, and that's how the density starts to happen. And the longer they go, the more intense, but the more mellow the flavour on us. So you get a real, and it's, it's, it's just a great thing to witness, and I'd encourage anybody to go and do it uh, if they can, when they're down in the mud in a region. Fantastic. Um, and white balsamic, very, very similar, although the, the, the must is concentrated. So Susie's going to have a little slurp of the, of the mimosa. Mm. Delicious. <laughs> Just delicious. So to follow on from something to add a bit of sparkle to your day, what I'm going to do is a little take on Eggs Benedict. Classic breakfast dish, breakfast brunch dish. Really nice with this. But we actually buy bread from the other door deli and jelly was our last. So it couldn't really have worked out any better. We have a friend who, uh, in great taste terms, has just got three stars for the most beautiful peat smoked bacon. And peat, the peat vinegar is one of the vinegars we're showcasing. So we're going to do charge yellow door bread. Susie has some rescue hens down in the garden, so I've got access to the freshest eggs. We're going to poach that, and then the hollandaise is used, uh, is, is finished with some peat smoked vinegar, some peat smoked white balsamic. So this is, and that is genuine Irish turf. This is some... And that's how it that happens. So I'm just going to go and get ready for this. So the, the um, peat smoked vinegar is um, done on trays in, um, this is smouldering for about 24 hours and um, our peat smoked vinegar is done above that. So you get a real flavor when you open the, the bottle, if you've ever been to the west of Ireland or west of Scotland, where you smell that turf burning and it's just the most lovely smell and, and uh, when you open the bottle, the aroma just hits you of the smoking. It's um, it's a real treat, and we're extremely lucky um, with the friend of ours that does the smoking for us because he just takes such time over it, and it's a totally genuine product. It's a labour of love for Jonathan. It is a labour of love. He is such a perfectionist, and it's great to work with people with that passion. Uh, and it's ingredients like that that really bring in, and, and Jelly touched on it, food doesn't have to be complicated. In fact, the best food is simple food, but have really good ingredients, know their provenance, and, and, and just enjoy them, enjoy them simply. And the, um, 
So this is this is Jonathan's product, the peat smoked bacon. So it's actually just won three stars. A great taste. The golden pork. So we'd love it to be the golden pork. Um, but the smell from the bacon itself when it's cooking or even when it's in the packet, again, it's very much like the peat vinegar. You just get that hit of turf. It's a beautiful, beautiful product. So we're very lucky to have joined up with him to get the um, to get our peat smoked done by him. Smoked by him. Also, bacon every day for breakfast. Yeah, <laughs> there's a trade off. Delicious bacon. <laughs> Absolutely. So, always. Um, so we've made the. Um, Here's one I made earlier, the, the, the Holland Days. We have, we made about 15 minutes ago and that's made with the peat smoked um, vinegar. And it, it, the character in it is just lovely. Bob's just giving it a stir here. Only super fresh, happy hands, <laughs> precious hands with so, that much color. I don't know if you can see, see the color, but it's um, the most stunning. So my hands, um, were free range hens and uh, we got them the day before they were going off for greater things um, and they're so happy and they have a lovely big run of about half an acre and so we get wonderful eggs and they've lasted well we've had a bit of a disaster with hens before because we've had foxes and ferrets and buzzards <laughs> but this lot have done quite well. They're still here, so we're very fond of them. And they all come running. Indeed. Well, so, you've, got uh, the you've got the mimosa, you've got hollandaise. I mean, does this get better? I mean, you know, can you get it? Oh, better? we have some lovely. We have some lovely. I can run you through what else. But after the eggs benedict, um, there's a little bit of um, pork belly, which is going to be done with a Bramley apple sauce and some chard from the garden um, and, and some Bramley apple vinegar. That's delicious. And um, we're finishing off, of course, with a bit of an, uh, an apple crumble. How the harvest you... has just come to the end. It was harvest service in most of the churches today. So what, what better than a cold sort of autumn evening than a, a heritage apple crumble? Just simple, simple food. Uh, so hopefully we'll, we'll get that. This is almost ready to... Let's see how... The we sad do. thing is you're not here with us to eat it. You see, this is it. And I think all of us watching would wish, so... Um... <laughs> um, so we're very lucky because obviously we're to right in the middle of the of Kadiyama apples here. And... Um, Within all the Bramley apple orchards, for the Bramley obviously has a PGI, but within all the apple orchards, there are the um, pollinator trees. That's where we go. And that's where we get our apples to make the heritage apple. So, um, and the thing is about all our products is that because they're so natural, they're very, they can be a very different color. I'll just, there's another bottle of this here. So I'll just pick that up. I mean, the, so the, you can see the two colours. Yeah. This one's a much more orangey because it's um, sat a little bit longer. This one is pink. It's still almost a little bit cloudy. That'll settle um, over time. Wonderful. So unlike like with all the products, the whether it's the blood orange and cardamom vinegar, that can be two totally different colours because... As you know, when you get two blood oranges, no two blood oranges are the same. And we were always extremely happy with the variations in, in all the colors. Um, just on the marmalade, we make a citrus vinegar as well. So the, mar the oranges from the, marmal from the blood orange and cardamom go into our marmalade. Um, and this is the citrus. So this has got lemon, lime, grapefruit, and orange in it. So this, we're now making this into a marmalade as well. So you can see all the different colors of the fruit. So what we're after really is to become completely zero 
uh, zero food waste. Uh -huh. uh, we can do that. Everything's compostable. We would rather make a product, you know, and, and use it because it, it, it makes such a special, the process makes such a difference to, to the final marmalade. There's acidity and clarity, just a really nice uh, way to do it. And they're very different, the marmalades, because there's so little water added. Um, there's this terrific concentration of fruit and flavour, and they are really unlike any other <laughs> that you will buy. And the other zero food waste products that we're making at the moment along with that is the apple. We make the apples into an apple chutney. Uh -huh. and we're very proud to have an association with Ballylisk cheese. Mm -hmm. um, so we make the chutney for them, which is fantastic. Um, and we make an and the, we make an onion jam, um, and the onion jam we've had made into um, little pods, and um, they're served on Aer Lingus business class when that's running. <laughs> there, there lies a the problem. Um, but anyway, we're very proud to be part of that. Um, we make a cranberry chutney, we make a Christmas tree balsamic, so um, that's a cranberry and orange, and the cranberries from that go into a chutney. Um, what are our zero food waste, Bob? We have a strawberry jam. Ah, we have a strawberry jam that's just out. Um, and, and the next one will be a heritage apple. We're going to make a heritage apple sauce. Cooley, what did you say? Yeah, an apple sauce. And a heritage apple sauce. So very, all very different products. Um, you've always got a little bit of a um, thought process when it comes to, um, hang on, so we have to do this. I'm sorry, we're not terribly well set up. So here's our eggs benedict. With some yellow door bread. Some of Jonathan's lovely peat smoke bacon. And a, and a smoky peat hollandaise. I have to say, I think it's the best hollandaise you can get. <laughs> <laughs> We're not biased at all. <laughs> but only happy hens should produce that colour of yolk. So, if you had that for breakfast and a little mimosa, you'd be off to a fairly decent start. A flying today. start, I think. A fairly decent start. <laughs> <laughs> so, breakfast sorted. And my evening. Could there be a better dinner? We're going to move on now to some pork belly. So Bob's now going to, I'm just going to bring this over here so we can have a look at the pork, pork belly. Okay, whilst you're doing that, maybe you can ask is... a question that's come in. What's the connection yeah. yes. between your blood orange vinegar and the marmalade? Do you make the vinegar from the oranges and then make the marmalade or they make the Yes. Oranges? Absolutely. So the oranges um, go into the vinegar um, get, in respect of the marmalade terms, would only get very partially cooked. Um, and then we, we strain off and make the vinegar. And then we, we take the oranges, strain them, and then make the marmalade. So it's got very little sugar added, very little, very little water. You won't see water as a main ingredient at all. All we so, have to go along with this is some beautiful rainbow chard picked this morning from Susie's garden. Um, Just, it is one of the superfoods, so many great health properties within it. And these are from 50 yards down the driveway, so it doesn't get any more local than that. Beautiful Arma Bramley apples, PGI status, and rightly so. And they will just complement this. And then we're going to finish the sauce with a little 
and my Bramley apple balsamic. The great thing about cooking with balsamic, if you cook with wine or spirits or beer and you add it, you then have to cook out and cook out to get back to a mellow flavour. Initially, it goes astringent. With vinegar, the flavour profile really doesn't change. So you could add it right at the end and you'll have such a, a clean hit. Or you can use it almost like a umami flavour by adding it fairly early. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll get a little crisp on the pork. That'll take a couple of minutes. So, and then but we'll take it out, put it in the oven just to warm, keep warm. And then we'll, we'll, we'll dice a little bit of this, get rid of most of the fat, fry it, deglaze it with some Bramley apple vinegar. And then we, we've got some gravy we made up early. We'll just finish that and serve it with a little of the rainbow chart. I'll do. I'll do this. Bob's just going to um, cut off the pork a bit. So if there's any questions, I'll endeavour to answer. I need to turn up my volume a little bit now. Yes, someone's asked a more general question, which was, um, when are these sessions going to be online for people to watch again? Um, they'll be going on towards the end of next week. Um, so do look back. Um, I think someone was really, really enamoured by your by your cocktail making the session came a little bit ago. Um, so um, buy your Lovely. Lovely. And your website, Susie, is baronbalsonics.com, isn't it? It is, yes. So go to baronbalsonics.com, buy, buy the um, tasting packs, all those individual bottles. Um, do you have your yep. bottles online? The marmalades are online. The citrus is not yet, but we'll try and get it put on by tomorrow. We just... It's be, um, it was the first batch, really, that we um, made. So it's the newest product, but we'll get it on by tomorrow. So yeah, Have a look on the website, and um, then, as I say, you'll be able to... Um, You'll be able to look at it. Someone just asked, where will they be available online? Um, if you come back to the Terra Madre Fringe website, which is where you've got your tickets for these sessions, um, you will find them online there. So, And that will probably be Wednesday or Thursday. We've got 31 Terra Madre sessions. Um, so it's going to take us a little while to, to edit those and get them up, but we endeavour to have them up by the end of the week. So um, have a look at those. Um, and also you can share those with, with your friends. Um, so PJ has said, can you describe the citrus again, please? Citrus. Is it on the Balsamic website? So do you have so we have a, the, at the minute, the citrus vinegar is on. Um, the citrus marmalade, we'll try and get on tomorrow. Literally, if I told you we made it yesterday. <laughs> um, it's a beautiful, I'll just see if I get you. It's a beautiful dark colour. Um, and you can just see the bits of lime and uh, lemon in it. And it's um, lemon, lime, grapefruit and orange. By size, I think it's grapefruit, orange, lemon, lime. <laughs> but... Um, Everyone every taste gets a predominant flavour and it's never the same one. Yeah, when so we... It proves everybody's palate is totally diverse, which is a great thing. When we were doing tastings at shows, um, sadly, not for a while, um, you people very definitely get a different taste. And, and sometimes people come to you and say, I don't eat sugar at all. Um, we don't put sugar in any of the whites. And generally, those people say they get the lime first, which is quite... Bizarre. Something it must be. It the, makes the most perfect mojito. It makes the most perfect mojito. We we can do cocktails. Um, yeah. It's a good subject. I I get the grapefruit first, and a lot of people would get a lemon first. So it's very um, it's fun because it, it's quite diverse on the range of tastes. I think you've absolutely um, got to buy that anyway. They're, they're certainly they're, they're putting um, questions in about it. So, um, so that sounds up. Yes. No, it's lovely. How are you going, Bob? Yeah. My next course is just about to come here. <laughs> a minute or two, yeah. A minute or two. So we're just. A little away for a bit longer. Uh, 
So whilst that's coming, Susie, how long have you been running Baron Balsamics? So we, I started it with, a lot of people ask me about the name Baron and I'll explain that as well. I started this in 2014 with a great friend. Um, in Ireland, we have a lot of townlands. So small areas, it wouldn't be a village or a hamlet, it, would, it is a, an area. And where Susan lived was on quite a rocky limestone part of County Down. So it's very much a townland. It's probably a couple of miles square, maybe a bit more. Um, but the, where she was, very rocky. And Burren means rocky limestone area. So the Burren in County Clare is obviously a huge one and the most prominent and the one everybody knows about. But there are four that we know about. So there's that one, there's the one that we're named after, and there's one near Newry and one in County Cavan. And everyone claims them to be their own. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so we started then, we were very lucky, we got a, uh, an innovation grant from um, Invest NI to try to improve, improve the flavours and maybe um, help us with reducing costs of things. So what they did was they introduced us at the time to a lot of flavorings, of which we couldn't actually taste the difference between one and another. And it was the best thing ever, because it made me so determined that we would never go down that route. So everything that we do is totally natural. If, if, this, if it says what's uh, on the bottle, that is what's in the, in the bottle. Heritage apples, the heritage apples from close by, that's what's in the bottle. Um, the peat smoke is done with the peat. Um, no smoky flavours, fume, nothing like that. Um, blackberry and thyme, beautiful blackberries. Um, as much time as we can grow ourselves um, and a few other people, and then we. Yeah. Um, and with so. This is this is always a great moment for me because when you put something this flavorful into something that's that's cooking reasonably well, as only agas do, <laughs> you get a huge flavor aroma as it trickles in. And I promise you, you can't do that with wine or spirits. You have to cook it for ages to get it out. But we can just do that. We can pop a little bit of nice pork gravy that was made from the juices from the pork belly cooking. Look at that. Push that through. Isn't that the most beautiful rainbow chard? Mm -hmm. We're trying to get that there. Mm -hmm. That's the chard. And then, he said, so there's the, the, the pork. I'm just going to pop this. Up onto a plate. And the chard washed, spun dry, and a tiny little bit of local butter. I was very lucky to have my daughter home during lockdown and our vegetable garden that really hadn't been on the go for about 10 years came back into action. And she is totally responsible for all, all our garden bits and pieces that we've had this year. It's been really lovely. She's now gone back to London, sadly. There's lots of weeding. <laughs> but she'd be reasonably happy. So that's our plate that's full. Local pork, garden chard, apples from down the driveway, and a little bit of vinegar. That just looks incredible. So, 
to the dessert. So we'll bring this back. Um, so, um, there we go. That's that. Just so delicious. Just looks incredible. <laughs> We, we've we've got another question um, about the marmalade again. Actually, um, yeah, the, the marmalade cherry box. There, are, is there any sugar in the marmalade? Someone is asking. There is a little. There is a little sugar in the marmalade. Probably about half of what commercial. Yeah, um, we think about half what a commercial marmalade would have, um, and no extra added water or anything like that. It I would. Some, it would be some quite. Heritage. They're just quite most stunning color. So all we've done with those is peel, no, 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 for no. that, for the, the apple crumble so is peel them. I mean, if you don't, we're going to do the crumble. I yeah, think that if you don't good. want to peel them, please don't. As a chef, probably we we do, and maybe we shouldn't um, to take away such beautiful color, and then just because most of the heritage. Some of them are cooked, but they're predominantly eating apples. So they're quite clean and crisp and don't need sugar. So what we've done to get a little bit of interest into the taste is we've cooked them down in a little butter. There's nothing like butter for, for, for driving flavor. And then a little bit of the, the heritage apple just in. And what that does is cut a little of the sweetness away so you'll get a, a more apple-y, if that doesn't sound like a a fairly horrendous bit of grammar, a more apple flavour. Yeah. Uh, and it just cooks them down really, really well. And just standard oats, butter, brown sugar, blitz them together, sprinkle it on top. And I mean, it is, it's a two minute dessert. Uh, and we're obsessed in this country sometimes. I go to the supermarkets and I see strawberries from all over the world. And they may look like strawberries. But how good do they really taste? Yeah. You know, it should be seasonal. We're at the start of the apple season. It's what we should be using. Apples, pears, rhubarb, really great local ingredients. And if you keep this the produce local, all the producers do well. You know, and it, it, it's, it's such a good, a good thing. Do you have any cream? We do have so she's just back from having a night out at Harry's shack. Yes, so she is yeah. she is saying that she really wants that pork. So <laughs> <laughs> and she shall have it. I think we all want that pork this evening. <laughs> <laughs> so um just getting ready a little bit of apple crumble here. Um, yes, yeah, so, so yes, yeah, so 2014. So then um, um, my friend Susan decided she, she had better things to be doing, so she left me. So I carried on, and I did quite a lot of fairs in England and here. And um, people say, How do you sell the product in England? Well, we got there. <laughs> we just went and we sold. So that was good. And, and we, we would keep going. Um, so then in 2017, um, I was lucky enough to meet Bob at a trade show. And at that point, we were still, I was literally still doing black balsamic, dark balsamics, no whites. And a few people had asked me at fairs for white balsamics. And I said, yeah, okay. So I thought, okay, better investigate this a bit more. Went off to the lovely company who we buy our balsamics from. And he said, well, you can have this level, this level, or this level. And I thought, well, haven't a clue what I'm doing. Let's go for the highest density and the best quality. And it was just the best best thing we ever did really um and it allows us to be so incredibly creative with it um and we never have to add sugar and what you get such an intense incredible flavor from them all um and so I said to Bob, I don't really know what to do with this white balsamic. I said, I think I want to make some tarragon and I want to make some wild garlic. Hang on, here we go. So we've got, hang on, 
We've got some apple crumble here. And just yes. some local double cream. And I don't think at this time you could get anything much nicer than that. That's beautiful. A real local, local night of food. So, um, so then Bob joined us, and are you can sit down. Yeah, I'm just gonna and, go to the last. Um, oh, have another cocktail coming now, and um, from that, we then started to do the zero food waste, um, and we lots of other. We've been lucky enough then to meet a lovely gentleman who makes, who dries our balsamic for us. So that's allowed us to make balsamic sugar and balsamic salt. So they all go in. So we do the salt with Hail and Mon salt. And um, we had a lot of difficulty finding a dry enough one, but they extra dry it for us. So that's good. Um, it's just a great quality salt. It's a lovely salt, as you know, you know. <laughs> Um, we, what else have we started doing? We then, with lockdown happening, um, we decided that we needed to, um, we weren't going off to do all the fairs. So um, we looked at diversifying a little bit and having got the dried balsamic and starting to work with that, we then started to make some seasonings and little envelopes full of delicious goodness to put on your steak or chicken or, and um, so we started another little company called the Letterbox Larder. But all the same, everything's totally clean, totally natural. And just about every product that we make in that, the USP of it is that it has that lovely umami vinegar, balsamic vinegar in it as a dried product. Okay, so there you have all the constituents of a smoky cocktail. Hang on, we don't at the minute, because I can't. Yeah. So here we go. We have a... Um, Flatbush whiskey, synonymous with, with whiskey throughout the world. Good, real good um, flavor notes. Nice little splash of ginger ale. So we're going to pop a little bit of peat smoked balsamic in, about five mils. Yes. <laughs> I'm enjoying my mimosa. We're going to pop in some ice cubes. Lots of ice. This is really nice if it's very cold. Good Irish measure of whiskey. <laughs> this one's for you, Bob. <laughs> Halfway up the glass. Always very dangerous to do these. A little squeeze of lime. Just knock you down a little bit. Like that. Top it up for a nice long drink. And a great after. And that is a smoky buck. We'd like to try something. Well, I shall have to try this. And you also have to try it. Have to stand with out of range. <laughs> Not really being a whiskey drinker, but. But what you're getting is the classic whiskey and ginger. You still smell the peat. You, you will, still of course, smell the peat coming through. And peat's through. always going to go really well. Peaty, you know, some of the island malts over in Scotland and, and the Western Ireland. That's actually really delicious. <laughs> No, I am not a whiskey drinker, but I could down this one happily. Yeah, I mean, it's to be enjoyed at the end of mm. dinner. Great digestive, just nice, simple. That's lovely. Do you want to come down here? Yeah. So that's pretty much from breakfast through to just before bedtime. <laughs> um, and, you know, we're, we're happy to take any questions. And not just about what we've done now. That's only the start of the adventure, I think. 
that sounds absolutely wonderful. And and just tell us about the packs that you've got together. You've got some some selection packs, haven't you, Susie? Yeah, so the Sierra Madre pack. Mm -hmm. That's the little jams. So there's an onion, uh, an onion, roast onion jam, an apple chutney, and a blood orange marmalade in that one. Mm -hmm. um, and the Terra Madre are all the vinegars we use to cook this evening. So the peat smoke, the heritage apple, and the Armagh Bramley apple. Fantastic. All in, in 100 mil sizes, which is a good starter size. It lets you experiment a little bit, find your feet. And we're always happy, you know, we we do so much with people. There's a, there's a lot of recipes on the site. We're always happy to help people get to understand it. So they're these, these size bottles, um, but with the peat and the, the heritage apple, and then a, a, um, a Bramley apple as well. Which was... One of the first ones we ever did. It was, and, 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 and rightly so, it's, it's, it's so close, so low. We know the people who farm the apples, and that's a good story for me, because you have a relationship with them, and it's about keeping it local, keeping it clean, and, and let the flavours of the amazing ingredients we have speak for themselves. Absolutely fantastic. And and the packs, just remind us how much they cost, because people... So the packs are uh, the... the um... Jams are on separately. The packs are 15, which is, we would normally retail the peat itself in a 100 ml bottle. That would be um, normally 9.95. So we're doing the three bottles, the 300 ml bottles for 15, especially for this. I think if you brought them individually online, it's about 24 pounds. So it's a, it's a decent statement. Maybe we want people to get in, enjoy them, because we believe that you'll come back to us. Absolutely. And again, anyone who's watching this, um, if you haven't already got the packs, then what you can do is you can um, watch this video again. It'll be online roughly next week. Um, you can watch Susie talking and watch Bob cooking. Um, and um, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to repeat your, your deaf cooking skills there, Bob, but I'm going to give it a go. I'm sure, I'm sure you can. <laughs> I'm sure you will. I mean, it, it is It's just about spend a penny or two more on the ingredients. It's money well spent. Have a little bit less and spend more on it, you know, and, and you'll enjoy it far more. Absolutely. And food with a real sense of place. Yeah, very much so. And it's, it's, it follows on exactly from what Jelly was saying. You know, they, they, they do an amazing job over there. I've known Simon for a long, long time, uh, both professionally and as a friend, and Jelly too. And they, they've, they've, they've worked so hard at, at recreating what they want to do. And sometimes that's very difficult. <laughs> Profit doesn't always follow dreams. You know, you've got to work blooming hard at it. Yeah. We're actually, we're incredibly proud because the Pete has got through to the finals of the Great British Food Awards. Hooray. So. Right. One of your existing customers, Henry, is saying that she really, really likes the peated um, balsamic. So she's already... Oh, lovely. Um, Brilliant. So she, she's messaged in and just said just how delicious it is. So. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We love it. We think it's very yeah, special. It's, it's, I went yeah. to a, a talk given by Joe Fairley about three or four years ago, Green and Blacks. And one of the things she said, and it really, really stuck with me, was if you bring out a new product, whatever it is, it has to be the best thing you've ever done or there's no point in doing it. And the peat is one of the last ones. It, it, is it our la most recent vinegar? It it's is our most recent, recent vinegar. vinegar. And I can tell you, I really believe it's the best thing we've ever done. We couldn't do it without Jonathan. And, um, and it is a great collaboration. Um, uh, uh, so I'm not sure what he gets out of it. <laughs> <laughs> we get lots <laughs> but, but out of it. Uh, but it, it is, uh, there's something nice about seeing the van come in to the kitchen table, have a cup of tea, tell us what you're doing, what you've planned. And, you know, we are now... Pre-COVID. Yeah. <laughs> now we're outside. <laughs> now we're outside. Um, but it's there's something nice about dealing with producers with real passion. Yeah, well, that's really, really come across this evening. I've just loved um, being in conversation with you this evening, watching this gastronomic feast. I am now beyond hungry. <laughs> Um, and just getting your passion and just getting a sense of food with a real sense of place. Um, 
I, I buy your vinegars anyway. It's not why you're here, but I do buy your vinegars. And I just, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I just think they just, Thank you. just add the most beautiful, beautiful kind of flavor and, 